Okay, so I just got off a of training with um, a team. It's the fall, so uh, I'm going to be starting to work with a lot of teams that are just getting back all together um, and, um, you know, starting their year. So um, hopefully I'll be having more tips as I start working with teams because I work with a team and I start thinking about something and try to figure it out and, and then I want to share it with you. Um, so a couple things with the braver. So if you haven't figured out the braver, you haven't implemented it with your team, highly recommend um, it's a really low cost way to um, get started on mental training, to make it more consistent if you've already started. Um, and it's at a whole program that really um, can have sort of a trickle effect on your team because not only is it a pre-practice exercise, but they can then take out pieces to use in competition, such as the mistake ritual, the reset word. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will put a link below. For those of you that are doing the braver, I know a lot of people are you know, going back to school right now. We've got a lot of teachers um, and coaches that are getting their teams back together. And so this is a good time to sort of revisit that if you haven't done it already um, or just get better at it if you've already implemented it before in the past. So um, this team has actually done it before, um, although they always have, everybody always has new athletes that have not. So I taught it today to this new, um, or to this team. And I just wanted to go over two things with the Braver. Um, and I guess really any kind of um, visualization, mindfulness, and um, and goal setting. Um, and the first tip is um, really focusing on the affirmations. And the affirmations, somebody just said something, but I can't see it. Hold on. Oh, so hi, CJ. <laughs> um, so the affirmations are really, really important to get right. And that's why in the Braver workbook, um, there's a whole workshop on setting correct affirmations because if their affirmations aren't right, they're going to be going through the motions when you do the braver. So you're going to get everybody together. You're going to spend all this time doing the braver and they're going to close their eyes and they're going to be like, I don't know what my goal is or it's not, it's not right for them. So I definitely encourage you to take some time and teach them how to create great affirmations. Um, if you don't know what that means, again, it's in the braver, but in a nutshell, we have goals, then we turn them into affirmations. Because the problem sometimes with goals is they are by, um, in their language, there are a lot of like hoping and wishing. So like a great example is, um, you know, in college, one of my affirmations was um, around being an All-American. And, um, you know, a goal would be something like, I want to be an All-American or, um, I'm gonna be an All-American, or my goal is to be an All-American, and it's all like future-based, right? And so affirmations really take that and they put it in the present tense. And the reason is because that affirmation is then used as a visualization cue that says, I can see myself being, right now, an All-American. Of course, when you're doing it, it's not actually true because it hasn't happened yet, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it as an affirmation, but it giving your brain that picture of that is possible for you. And so this is where it gets really um, specific for the athlete because for me at that time that I was doing that, um, an All-American was definitely a stretch, but it wasn't, you know, like I was playing and I had the potential to, to do great things. Um, you know, I think sometimes we get and actually, I think Cherry and, and Katie were just talking about this in the group. Um, they have to be realistic because if they're not, you close your eyes and you say, um, I want to be an All-American and you can't see it. And I always give the example, you know, I don't, I don't do an affirmation that I can dunk or that, I, you know, and because it's like I can close my eyes and I don't see it happening. And yes, you want goals to be a stretch, but you want, and it's, and it's kind of a good like litmus test. Like if an athlete can truly close their eyes and see it happening, even if it's not happening right now or in three months or six months, they can see it or they can dream it, then that's a good sign that that visualization is appropriate for them. Um, and again, you know, this is different for everybody. So this is where I think coaching, the rubber kind of meets the road. This is where coaching can be really helpful. Um, Cause I had an all American, I ended up I think being an honorable mention all American. Um, but I had that affirmation pretty early on before it was really maybe gonna happen. But I believed it. 
So again, that's, that's the difficulty with this. But that's why I want you to spend some time on affirmations because that's how important they are. Because if you have an athlete saying these affirmations to themselves because they think that they're, sh they're supposed to or they think that everybody else has these high goals, but they don't close their eyes and they can't see it, it's kind of a waste of time. It's almost like it's worse because it's a reminder that they don't really believe it. So that's one um, thing I want to talk about with, excuse me, with the braver that's on my mind after working with this team this morning. Um, the second thing, so I would say this for most, any, well, I should say this for any kind of mindfulness work, often the people that need it most, <laughs> i.e., I was one of those, um, the perfectionists, the people that are hard on themselves, the people that want to do things right and can't stop thinking about doing things right, um, that's kind of type A, and a lot of coaches are that way. Um, the people that close their eyes and try to meditate and say, I, I'm terrible at it, are often the people that need it the most, okay? So this is where the, the framing of it is really important. Um, mindfulness is not easy. People think it's just about relaxing, and it's not. So try to close your eyes and not think, not an easy thing to do. And you're asking your athletes to do that, or at least focus on their breath, and sometimes when they learn that, again, they're sitting there and they're doing it and all their teammates are doing it and they're opening their eyes and they're like, oh my God, everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody's good at this. I suck at this. This sucks. And I think it's really important to frame up mindfulness or visualization or breathing, anything, and let them understand that it's not something that they're gonna be good at right away. And in fact, it's an opportunity to let go of trying to be perfect at things. Um, and it's not a linear progression. It's something they'll, they'll get better at, but there'll be certainly days when they cannot focus. Um, but it, it, is, it is the doing of it that's important. And I think that's the real key. It's, the not, it's not being good at it. It's the doing that is important. In the same way that we think of stretching, if you're bad at it, yeah, maybe it hurts. I know it's not supposed to hurt, but it does sometimes. Um, those are the people that need to do it the most. And those are the people that are gonna say, oh, I'm not good at it, this sucks, I don't wanna do it. Um, and so I think letting them know that, and, and doing it yourself, right? Um, I'm just moving the camera. Um, doing it yourself so that you have that experience of saying, yeah, this is not easy. You know, I'm an adult, I have, you know, I'm, I have a job, I'm, I'm living life, and this is hard for me too, I think is really, um, really important. So to summarize, and I will answer any questions that you have if you put them in the comment below. Bailey's on, Bailey, I see you have a new last name. Did something happen? I'm just kidding, I saw, I saw the pictures on Facebook. Someone just got married, congratulations, that's awesome. You guys are the cutest couple. Cassie, hi, CJ, hi. Hi guys, I guess I can wave at you. I don't know, all these new Facebook things. I know all of you guys, and I'm so excited that you're here. Hi, 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 hi. Um, so if you have any comments or questions about the Braver, um, and for those of you that are new in the group, yes, I'm getting hearts, thumbs up, I love that. Um, if you guys are new in the group, the Braver is a great place to start because it's simple, anybody can do it, doesn't take a lot of time, it's like five minutes before practice, um, and it, it's really, uh, I think, a foundational piece that, um, yeah, it's just, it's a good, it's a good, solid thing to do. And I think it's worth your while um, and has a lot of benefits um, for your team. Okay, so let me re um, summarize. Ugh. What did I talk about? Oh, first thing I talked about with Braver is affirmations. Making sure those are correct, which again is you know an art, not a science, different for everybody. But taking the time to actually do that correctly, I'm gonna put this back up again. Um, really important, okay? Affirmations. Second thing is framing it in a way that you know again you can use a stretching analogy. It is not an easy thing, and just because it's not easy doesn't mean that you don't do it. You still do it. Um, one of my mentors mentors told him that your subjective opinion about how well you did something, in this case it was meditation, but it could be braver, your subjective interpretation of how well you did does not change the outcome of, of actually doing it 
which is the important thing. Do it, do it, do it. So um, if you have any questions or comments, um, I will jump back on later today. So you can, about the Braver in particular, I can, you know, just put them below. Um, and for those of you that have great other experiences with Braver, I mean, I, I just think that we have a lot of collective knowledge in this group um, and certainly not just from myself. Um, a lot of you guys are implementing Braver, so feel free to chime in and give your advice as well. And, um, you know, next week I think I'm going to talk about, I know a lot of you are starting your, um, getting your athletes some mental training this year, or and you're in this group, so you're probably, if you're not doing it already, you're motivated to do that. Um, I'm going to jump in and try to give you some more um, free or low-cost options for um, getting a plan together, because um, I can help you with that. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Comments below or questions below. Bye.